How's it going, guys? Just getting Facebook connected here. All right, we are good to go. What's up, Mark? How you doing, man? <laughs> All right, I think we're good. You guys hear me okay? Looks like uh, Facebook's hooked up and pick, uh, let's see. Nice, all right. I have my cowboy shoved in my dinosaur. <laughs> peanut butter and jelly, peanut butter and chocolate. <laughs> Two good things that go good together, right? All right. Oh, so weird when it does that. Let's go like that. There we go. Where are his hands? I must be on him. Okay. Du, 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 du. All right. <coughs> Peter, too funny. From Peru, how are you doing? Done, ship it. <laughs> Thanks. All right. So uh, this is kind of where we ended off last week and I wanted to color this guy and then possibly get into posing if we have time. Um, and I know the saddles are a little bit different than the one I have on here. Hey Night Shadow, how you doing? Hello everybody over on YouTube, how's it going? Okay, so I'm just gonna get this base color. I was trying to look for some scale, uh, scale texture uh, but I, I was not successful <laughs> in doing that. Okay, this guy is pretty orange. I think I might want a lighter orange. Maybe like this. Hey, thanks, guys. And I'm just kind of eye-dropping the color off of this guy. Um, and you'll, know that, you'll note that this head is my active sub-tool. And you'll see how everything else is slightly darker. That's not the orange I'm looking at. I'm actually looking at the orange on his head. From Ukraine. Wow, how's it going? Hey, what's up, Michael? How you doing, man? Oh, you're fine. Thanks for joining me. Super cool. All right. Um, so I'm going to fill this head. Fill the body. Hey, Cosmo. Lots of people from all different sides we have uh twitch and facebook and youtube everything popping off today so that's awesome oh goodness and it is the middle of summer here in utah <laughs> um in fact july 4th is just around the corner super hot with all the fireworks and all that business how you guys doing hey cosmo Um, so with the, I, I'm Peter, I was trying to decide, um, I was just looking for an alpha that I can click and drag on here. Um, I don't, I'm not quite sure what, I, I don't know. I'm going to try some different approaches. We'll see what happens. <laughs> okay. Hot in Ohio as well. Yeah, I bet. Okay. Actually this, the, the, what am I trying to say? The claw color is close to what I want. It's just a darker, slightly darker orange. You haven't hit over 100 yet, you're lucky. <laughs> oh, I see Moon Mix, no worries, no worries. I appreciate it though, man. Okay, um, let's see. Grab this and fill it. And the teeth and the claws and all that stuff. We're just going to fill all those with like that lighter brown. And then I'm going to come in here with highlights and I'll paint some, some kind of lighter colors on the tops. You've had 107. I think that's been, are you, where are you at again? Malchus, I can't, are you in like uh, Arizona or New, New Mexico or are you in California? I cannot remember. Or are you somewhere else that I, Texas maybe? <laughs> I'm trying to remember. El Paso, thanks, yes. I guessed it right at the end, Texas. El Paso, 107, really? Man, that's nuts, man. 
That is nuts. Okay, let's see. I'm just continuing to fill. I want to make this blanket a little more red. Uh, let's see. But I do have a good leather color right now, I think. So I'm just kind of filling all these parts. San Jose is 88. United States of Croatia. <laughs> okay, let's see. Now I can only I can only um, I, I say this almost every stream, but I know there's a few of you that don't under, that don't realize, so I, I say it again. Um, you can only eye drop from your uh, your spotlight image if this circle is showing, and you show that circle by hitting Z or Z. Okay, and that's the only way you can eye drop, and the the hotkey for eye drop is C. So if I hover over this tooth. You can see everything that I haven't filled yet turns that color. Okay, like this blanket and this stirrup thing and his eyeball. But I wanted to fill his teeth with that lighter color. That's pretty cool. Kind of like this. Um, and I like how he has these spikes coming off. I'm, I need to add those still. And I'm gonna, I think I'm going to add those with Sculptress Pro because it's so easy to do. Um, Let's see, and then with the claws and whatnot, Canary Island in Spain. Hey, how are you doing? Furthest western tip of Texas and it doesn't cool down until October. That's kind of like Utah. Um, yeah, United, no kidding. United is just a word. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. I would love to be united, you know? <laughs> That'd be nice. Okay, um, I want to go a little more red with this. Blanket, come on, blanket. Hmm, not red enough. Red, this direction maybe. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Malaga, I'm probably not saying that right. Malaga, Malaga, how do you say that, Pablo? <laughs> uh. And how's everybody doing today on this wonderful Monday? Hey, Sapna, I'm doing well. Thank you very much. And um, just kind of getting some colors on this guy. Let's see. And this is being colored kind of by the dust that's in front of it. So you, you only take the colors here kind of for face value. You don't... You don't necessarily need to absolutely stick with them because they're being affected by light and the environment and all sorts of different things. So it's, uh, you don't have to stick with those exact colors. Oh, I need to turn off projection. I'm like, why is my paintbrush not working? Spotlight projection. Hey, how's it going? Just kind of uh, clearing the tops of these claws. Barcelona, Spain, how you doing? So glad I get to uh, communicate with people all over, the, all over the world. I'll never get used to it. It's just uh, it's a cool thing. There we go. Painting these claws. Oh, you more more people from Spain? <laughs> That's cool. Get some dark brown going on. I don't know if I like that or not, but. I'll just leave it for now. Um, I'm gonna try to paint some of this color on the back side. Sometimes I like to uh, I like to fake ambient occlusion um, and just kind of get it started, just to help it out a bit. And then the amb ambient occlusion will just amplify it more. It's kind of fun to do. I love I love painting on the surface of my models. I just do. It's kind of like painting those miniature figurines, you know, for like 
D and D or Warhammer or something like that. It's just really fun to to hand paint. So I do it. <laughs> Let's do some ambient occlusion through here. I'm actually gonna eye drop this orange color and take it just straight down. So it doesn't change the color too much. But I could roll it into some purples and stuff like that, which would be fun. And I will do that in a little while. But right now I just kind of want to darken the orange that, that's there. Columbia and Montreal, geez. From everywhere. I need to do more traveling, <laughs> I've decided. I have not left the U.S. other than I went to Guam once, and that's still U.S. owned, so it's not, even though it's halfway around the world, Guam is just south of Japan in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Have I ever used the, the colors complement for shading? Uh, sometimes I do. Yeah, sometimes I do. I like it a lot, like like in the blues and stuff in here. It's pretty fun. Hey, Robert, how you doing? Do you have a, Malachus, do you have a guide for that, I guess? Um, I'm trying to remember. I have a whole folder full of color wheels. I need to, I need to pull them up. But if, do you have a trick for that? Or you just kind of uh, do it by hand? <laughs> oh, Moon Mix. Thanks, man. Yes, this concept, this, the dinosaur part of the concept is done by my good friend, Kevin Keel. Kevin Keel, I used to work with him at uh, Avalanche and at Cast AR. And we used to carpool all the time to work. <laughs> He's a great guy. All right, Pixel Logic ZBrush, how are you posting? How are you posting links over on YouTube? I cannot do this. It says no way. Hey, Silverite, am I using subdivision levels now? I'm not, actually. Um, this is what my mesh looks like. It's Dynamesh with a little bit of. Uh, with a little bit of Sculptress Pro added in. Um, I need to do the step where I will actually Z remesh it and then project the details back on. And um, I also need to do that with the head because the head is in the same state. It's like a, a Dynamesh state. I need to cut the mouth open and actually give it some, you know, some uh, an interior. So I still need to use that. Kyle still uses hacks to post links on YouTube. Kyle! <laughs> hey, Dark Grim, how's it going, man? Uh, do I use topology for this model? If you're talking about game resolution topology, uh, I may take it in, I may take it to game resolution, but when I'm working on my high resolution model, I do not pay attention to the topology necessarily. I just try to get enough topology in there that will allow me to get the details that I need. So not necessarily. Yeah, I might try some uh, Sculptress Pro mode in here to mess with some of the scales. We'll see. Okay, I'm going to get some of this light color. That's that's an area that you're still trying to work. You can make the interior, but when it comes to animating the mouth or creating morph layers, you're lost. Yeah, that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> that's kind of that's com that is that is definitely out of the realm of this stream. But I I have done it. I've done my share of uh, morph targets and um, creating geometry for animation and making morph targets and things like that. Typically games don't use morph targets. 
because it's just too much information for the game engine to process. I'm just kind of generically doing a, a highlight over this. And I'll do it on the tops of the legs as well. Just kind of painting this in. I haven't done that yet, Mortar. I will, I will in a bit. Um, I typically, and I'll, I'll show you the reason why I haven't, is because it's in Dynamesh mode right now. And I need to, like I said, I need to make it so it has subdivision layers and it has, um, you know, a low resolution that I can adjust better. But if I go to this mask lasso and say I grab this whole belly area right here, you can see that this mask is very tight, even if I blend it out. And if I move this, well, I'll probably move the back end. If I move this and stretch it, ah, it's, you're not really seeing it, but it just doesn't, it doesn't result, the results aren't the best. <laughs> it's better to move, make large, large movements if your resolution is low. Okay, I guess I can do it really fast. I'll just I'll just put it into um, I'll put it into the the subdivided state, and how I do that is I can duplicate this body so I have two of them. Then I will um, I will Z remesh this. Okay, let me hide this so you guys can see it. He doesn't have a head, and I want to keep some of this detail, but. Uh, the, the place I need to focus on most with the detail are in the hands. Hey, from London. How's it going? Um, now I can do, I can use kind of that new Z remesher uh, that is inside the gizmo. If I just click Alt and go home, click Alt and reset the, the axes on the gizmo. It likes it if the gizmo is set down to zero, zero right there. See how it's set down to the, the middle of the scene. And then if the axis is, is straight, that's the, that's kind of where you want to be when you do your Z remesher. Then if you click on the gear, you can see these uh, Z remesh by Dynamesh by Union and by Z remesher. I'm going to try it here. Actually, before I do, I'm going to save it. Because that's what you do, is you save it before you do something big like that. So we're going to save it. All right. It's so nice seeing everybody in chat on all three, <laughs> on all three social platforms. Okay. So let's go back to this gizmo and do Z remesh by Z remesher. Okay. Now we're going to grab this X symmetry and pull it. So then it'll be symmetrical across the X axis. And this is just a guess, but I'm thinking it's going to need around 7,000 or 8,000 polys. Uh, let's see. Let's try 7,423. <laughs> hey, Potato Genie, best name ever. Uh, Robert, if you had to do morphing, though, would you do it in ZBrush or use Maya, Moto, or something else to do it? Uh, that's a great question. I actually love to do morph targets in ZBrush because you get the morph brush and you get the smooth brush. As long as you don't cut your geometry or um, as long as you don't alter the vert count is what it's called. So the number of vertices and in Maya, when you uh, do vertices, Maya will assign each vertice a number. You never really see it. I mean, there is a list that you can dig down into and, and check out the vert numbers. But as long as you don't alter that numbered state, you can do your morph targets anywhere you want. So you can export as an OBJ, bring them into ZBrush, do your morph targets. There's actually a really cool uh, way to do morph targets inside of ZBrush where you can put them in layers and then you can slide the layer back and forth. So you can actually watch your head morph from one state to the other. So in the layer, it's like a smile versus like the standard and you can like slide back and forth between the two. And it's super cool to watch, and uh, it's it's nice to work that way. Okay, let's see. So this is this is kind of where I ended up, and it's looking pretty good. 
I'm happy with that. It's kind of a medium resolution. It's not super low, but it's not crazy high. Um, oh, sure. Michael Vicente, huh? Nice. Hey, what's up, Jeffrey? Yeah, Robert. Um, yeah, if and I, I don't know if Ask ZBrush has any information on morph targets or not, or the Z Classroom. You can try that, or just doing a uh, doing a search on morph targets in ZBrush. There, there are some tutorials out there. I, I haven't made one yet, but there are some tutorials out there that show you how to uh, to do that. Um, I, I wanted to show you guys the reason I love this new way to Z Remesh. It's using the exact same thing as the old Z-Remesh, but the, the, basically the new thing you have is this white cone. And this is kind of a temporary state that your model is in right now. And uh, what I mean is, if you, gr if you watch me grab this cone again, I'm not going to let go. I'm just going to grab it. You'll see it pop back to my old, my old mesh, my old DynaMesh mesh it remembers that, that state. So you can come back in here and you can try different numbers of resolution. So I can try 5,000, let's say, and I'll try it again. And uh, it's just really nice to not have to be over on the Z remesher inside the tool menu and just guess and then go control Z, go back and try it again, go back. Um, it'll just remember the state that you're in. So, um, and sometimes the the numbers it's only kind of a guide rather than a, an absolute so it depends on how high your settings are it does it does work with the settings over in the tool menu so whatever settings you have over here it's going to work with that so since i have adaptive on it's just going to adapt those faces to whatever is going to work best for that mesh that's kind of the best way to do it Okay, so um, now that I like what this looks like, I can go back to my gear. It's kind of hard to see, it's hidden in here. Click on that and say accept. If you start working on your mesh without hitting accept, it may revert back to the state that it was in before, like right after you did your Z remesh. So it will remove everything that you've done. So make sure you hit accept. Um, let's see, Ammon, can, can I rig and animate a ZBrush model? You can, but it's not recommended. So if, if you're trying to do this professionally and get hired to do this, I 100% recommend, uh, retopologizing your model. So it will be the best state that it can be for animation. So like this model is not intended for animation. This is just giving me a lower resolution model that I can work with easier inside of ZBrush. That's the only reason I'm doing this. So unfortunately, Z Remesher is not a shortcut for animation models. <laughs> Excuse me one second. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I'm glad I have that silencer knob. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Do they have a backdoor in it to the alternate algorithm? So, Robert, I guess I don't understand what you're talking about. Inside of the morph target thing? Or what are you talking about? <clears throat> okay. So, hold on one second here. Let me, uh, let me get the next step down. So, now we, we still have our high resolution mesh in a different subtool. And we have our low resolution mesh right here. So, what we can do now is we can um, hide everything except for those those two. So I'm gonna unhide this one, turn solo off. Now you can see both of them. And how you hide and show every single thing that you have is you hold down shift, click on the eyeball of your currently selected subtool. That's how you hide, show everything and hide everything, okay? So you hide everything and then show the one right above it. And I like to keep my high resolution uh, mesh right just one step above my low in my subtool menu. That's kind of, I don't know if it's, if it's necessary, if it's just me, but I like to do that. Then I can hit project all, and it's just gonna snap that lower resolution mesh to the higher resolution mesh a little, a little tighter. Then what I can do is subdivide that and actually subdivide it. So hit control D, and you can start to see the active points go up. 
So control D again, control D one more time. We're at 800,000. That should be enough to hold the poly paint. So let's do a projectile again. <clears throat> Dark and grim, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, right? Doesn't everybody want that? I don't know, honestly, I don't know how an al algorithm, like a computer algorithm would be able to ever do that. I don't know how it would. Unless you could like, unless you could plan the stars, um, the stars, what a star is, it's basically more than one edge coming off of a vertice. Some people call them poles, stars, whatever you want to call them. Um, because if you plan where those poles are going to go on your mesh, um, so for an example, there's one right, if, let me hide this. There's a pole, there's actually two. See, this is what I'm talking about. There's two poles right here. There's one with three and there's one with five right next to each other. And here's a pole with three. Here's a pole with five. Um, the best places to put those poles when you're actually creating a character for animation is um, here. This is a good one, actually. And here and underneath here and then here you typically have four poles when something is extruding out of something else if you take a low resolution plane so to speak and you just grab one of the faces and extrude it out that will automatically create four poles right on every single corner so if you think about extruding an arm out of a body the ultimate number of poles would be four so for for example this this arm would be one here one here if you think of the arm as a simple box and then one back here and one back here but obviously it's put a pole right there that's not the best place for it so i just don't know how you could you know tell a computer hey you need to put the poles in the right spot <laughs> So let's see, if I'm missing any of your questions, please ask them again. Um, and Moon Mix will get to the next step after this. Three-sided pole equals nose and a pole with five sides equals extrusion pole. Yeah, I guess you, I don't know the technical terms. <laughs> That's, but thanks for posting that. Um, do you smooth out between your projection steps? Or do you just project, divide, project, divide? So I will typically project the very first level just to snap the low resolution to the high resolution. Then I'll divide it a bunch of times and then project the, the highest level again. Um, let me turn this off and I'll show you the result. So this is the result. This is the low with the projection on it. And then if I go up one, that's the high. You can't, you can't really tell the difference between the two, right? So. But one of them is if I turn on the poly paint, or sorry, the, the um, poly frames, you can see that this is the DynaMeshed version, and this is the new Z-Remeshed reprojected version. So there's one has subdivision levels and one doesn't. So if, if that works, typically I'll go in and I'll delete the old one. Okay, so I'll delete it. See you later. Okay. And now I can go down in subdivision levels and you can start to see the facets. I'm on the lowest level right now that I made. I could go lower than this. Um, I kind of like this, this density. Um, now I can just grab the back end of this guy and I'll have to move the, the, uh, the claws later. But now look, when I, uh, when I blend the mask, it blends much nicer and much farther down the body because I have less vertices to, to mask, if that makes sense. So now I can move this and it's just a much smoother blend. Okay, so now I'm gonna be, I'm gonna have to, um, here, let's unhide the rest of him. I'm gonna have to move those claws, see the claws? Let's reset this and just move those claws back into place. Easy peasy. Yeah, no worries. I'm going to do it again here on the head so you can watch me do it again. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. Um, my cat, is it Michael or Mike? I don't know. I can't see if that's a T on the end of your name or an, or an L. Um, the, I was, I was hoping to do the scales with some kind of an alpha, but I have hand painted scales in the past. And sometimes it's nice because I can, you know, put, put them in exactly where I want them, which is nice. Um, I'm seeing something. I'm trying to figure out what this, what's going on here. I don't know if that's in this mesh. Looks like it. I don't know where that came from. It could sometimes the uh, the Sculptress Pro uh, the the little the little triangles that Sculptress Pro makes sometimes those will actually get projected and I think that's what's happening. Can you see that right there? And on the arm and on the hand. It actually projected the little Sculptress Pro triangle. So all I need to do is come in here with the smooth brush and knock those down. Really easy. And that's another reason to uh, kind of, it's, it's good to experiment and put in detail with Sculptress Pro mode, but doing this Z remesher method and adding subdivision levels will help you smooth that right back out so you don't have those little triangles. Um, hey Oscar, how you doing? With the head separate, it's not too far off from making it 3D printable. Absolutely, yeah, I can just put a, I can pretty easily put a key right in there and print this head separately. So, um, okay, let's let's duplicate this head. And we are going to solo this. And I don't, I believe I don't have an interior to this mouth. I might, but I don't think I do. Um, I'm just going to Z remesh it as it is and because I let me see I'm going to grab the move brush and turn on topological and just see if I can open that to see if I did yep it looks like I did put an interior in that mouth it looks like it goes back to about right here if I'm seeing it correctly so if I Z remesh this it should work if I dynamesh this right now it would it would seal that mouth shut right now so since he does have a mouth interior, if I Z remesh it, Z remesh does not meld the mouth together like Dynamesh does. Okay, so that's that's one reason for using the the Z remesher. Yeah, but if you have a new set of scales with the three D chisel, that undercut will be, yeah. Yeah, you want to stay away from undercuts if you're going to do 3D printing. Well, if you're just going to 3D print it, just like a one-off, it's completely fine. Undercuts are fine. But if you're going to manufacture this, like make several copies, then undercuts are bad. So you kind of have to, if you're going to actually make molds from this, you have to think ahead and figure out how it would, how it would work that way. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, Z remesh this. And I'm going to um, reset this back down to the world. I'll turn on the floor. <laughs> Robert, exactly. It's a pain in the butt when you're, yeah, if your fingers are too close and you Dynamesh, you'll get this webbing through here. So then you have to increase the amount of Dynamesh resolution to get rid of that, or you have to spread the fingers apart more. That's kind of the same with the mouth, if it melds together. Sometimes it will do it and you're just and you don't realize it until it's too late. You're like, dang it, I I sealed my mouth shut. <laughs> oh yeah, it's well in, in games and film they call it a mouth bag. I guess sometimes because you look at it, if you just look at it by itself, it does look like a like a bag that you'd put money in, you know? <laughs> okay. Click on the gear, click on Z remesh by Z remesher. Now, since this head is a lot smaller, we can go a lot lower on the uh, on the count. So I'm going to try. Mm, I'm going to try 3,500. It might still be too high. It might be too low. We'll see.
Yeah, I, I'm going to 3D print it, but I don't know if, I don't think I'm going to mass manufacture anything. So, okay. So this looks okay. Man, I love Z-Remesher. I love Z-Remesher. It's pretty nice. Moon mix, how will I make the reins? I'm just going to use a, the, the snap brush, the snap strap brush, whatever it's called. I'll, I'll show you that later. I may draw them by hand, I don't know, but I typically use the snap strap brush. It's kind of fun to say. If I hit B, it's, uh, is it under S? Snake hook. Hmm, hold on a second. It's kind of like this IMM curve brush. There's so many brushes in here. But it's just called the strap brush. I'll have to find it when I get there. But you just essentially, it's like a three-part insert multi-mesh brush. It works on a curve. You just draw it. Um, you can't draw it out in space because it's a snap brush. So it's going to snap to any geometry that's underneath it. And if there's not geometry, it's going to snap to that middle plane of the, of the uh, ZBrush environment. So it'll... Yeah, so um, there's ways to turn it off, but my favorite thing to do, I should say, there's ways to turn off snapping, so it doesn't do that. But my favorite thing to do is actually create some temporary geometry that I'm going to snap that to, and then then delete that geometry when I'm done. So that'll be the, I'll show you that when I get to it. Oh, Night Shadow. Yeah, I saw you post that before, sorry. Uh, the, the hamster from Overwatch reminds you the one from Bolt. Absolutely. I'm sure they were inspired by that one. So, okay, we want to accept this. Looks pretty good. Okay, now, since his mouth is closed and I need to project, it's, it's more likely than not going to cause some issues inside this mouth. But I really don't care too much because I can go in and clean it up after the fact. So, um, here we go. Yeah, XMG Toolbox helps organize the brush mess. Yeah, thanks for throwing that shout out there. Yeah, Michael over at uh, M XMD Toolbox. If, if somebody wants to post a link to that, feel free. Um, that's a really cool brush organizer tool. And there's lots and lots of brushes there. Do I ever use Matchmaker Brush to conform your straps to the topology underneath? Not really, um, because I typically will draw right on the surface. So it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Um, what I have used Matchmaker Brush for in the past is um, sometimes, let me see if I have one. Mm. So when, when I was doing the, the bases for the, or the, the playset pieces, I guess. Let me see. It's, it's, it'll be completely hard to see this. Um, yeah, I need to get a remote control on my camera so I can zoom in on this stuff. But there's, there's a trophy in here with, um, it's like a car trophy, you know, like a, a cup, like a trophy cup. And it's it has a kind of a rounded bevel to the whole thing. What I did is I took a sphere and then I made the trophy in 2D on top and I gave it enough geometry that then I can use the match move brush to actually make that trophy be, uh, kind of have a, a arced surface. Super cool, love it. Love it, love it. Okay, so let's let's get back to projecting this guy. I'll turn solo off, hide everything except for that head. Um, let me see here. Okay. <laughs> hey, what's up, Jimmy? How you doing? Um. Thanks, I used the same brush on Camel Yosemite Sam's writing on the leak you posted earlier. You had to use draw as line. Oh yeah, yeah, draw as line works pretty good. Um, oh, you saw somebody post it for using it to place a logo on a superhero chest. Oh yeah, for sure. Thanks, me. Okay. Um, let's go... Uh, Let's project this. Okay, and if I hide the the high resolution head, and we'll just look at that. Hold on a second. 
Um, so you, I'll show you what I'm talking about with the, um, I, I don't know what's happening in there. I kind of want to, um, I want to break this into two poly groups so I can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use select lasso. And I couldn't do this if it was still in a dynamesh state, but I'm hoping this loop goes all the way through the mouth. Okay, so if I get close, see, see this loop right here? If I hide that loop and it goes, let's see, it goes back to here, it stops at a, if there's a pole and there's a pole right here. So I'm gonna continue that all the way around the back side. So hopefully it's going through the mouth. Now what I can do is go auto groups. Yep, it did. Okay, so see it 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 did, made a group out of the top and a group out of the bottom and a group out of that new, that uh, poly loop that I hid. And if I want to add that poly loop to something, all I have to do is um, isolate it. Sorry, let's invert that. Isolate it like this, and then hit Control W, and it'll put that ring into the same poly group as the rest of the head. Now you can see that it has um, the top and the bottom are now in, it, in their own poly groups. Super cool. That's a, that's a really, really cool thing to do. So even on a human face, sometimes you'll see uh, an edge loop that's going around the cheek and through the interior of the mouth. And sometimes it's good to give those two separate things a poly loop. <laughs> poly loop, like, like uh, what's his name? Poly Shore. <laughs> That's how you spelled it. <laughs> oh, funny. Okay, so now I could actually, it doesn't work the best, I'm gonna tell you right now, but you can project pieces and parts. You don't, you don't have to project the whole thing at once. You, it will respect masking. So if you want to mask off a part or the other and just project it one at a time, it'll work that way. So that's a really cool thing to do. Um, back here and we're gonna we're gonna subdivide this up now to about uh, let's go it's it's either two million or six hundred thousand six hundred thousand might be light for the detail that I want to put in here so I'm gonna go up to 2.4 million with this head um, not it doesn't need that much right now to project that much detail because it doesn't have much I haven't gone in here and cut in the scales or anything like that but I want it there for future. So now what I can do, like I said, I can um, project things one at a time, but I'm gonna do the whole thing after I save. Let me save first, save. Okay, anytime you do something big, you wanna make sure you save. Chess master, um, oh, the only, the, how I split the head was I just hid a, a poly loop. I should explain that a little more. The, how, you, how you hide a single poly loop is you have to be on select lasso. It does not work with select rectangle, okay? So as long as you have select lasso, you can hide a poly loop, but you need to be on your lowest subdivision level or with no subdivision levels at all with a low resolution mesh. It does work with high resolution, but you don't, you don't necessarily wanna hide this little tiny poly loop so um, I'm gonna go back down in subdivision levels. So now I'm at my very lowest one. And if I hold down Control plus Shift, and you can see I can select one of these uh, edges. See how it lights up white? And it's going to send that white edge around that poly loop and hide it, like so. See that? And the way auto groups works is it will put everything that's in its own island into its own group, if that makes sense. So if I hit auto groups right now, it's gonna put the nose in one group and it's gonna put the rest of the head in another and it's gonna leave that poly loop in its own group. So if I hit it, you'll see, see that? The entire head's in yellow, the nose is blue and that poly loop is still green. And that's how I did, that's how I did it before, okay? Um, yeah, sometimes it grabs more more than one loop. It will ch sometimes change direction on s if you have like a, a loop that's going around something, um, and sometimes it will grab the loop behind it. Uh, so 
and if it's a spiral, sometimes it'll spiral. You know, if, if you uh, do Z remesher, sometimes Z remesher creates spirals and it'll spiral down. So just try and, you know, do it again. Just just control Z and do it again and tr or try a different loop or something like that that's close to it. So, yeah, no worries, Zubik. Thank you for stopping by. Thanks for the kind words, man. I appreciate it. Okay, so let's unsolo this and we're going to project. Here we go. And it's going to take a minute. Yeah, it could have been a spiral. I mean... They redid the Z remesher so it spirals a lot less than it used to, but it still does occasionally. And usually when it spirals is when your appendage or arm or whatever is on a diagonal away from the world axis. So if your legs are straight with the world axis, it's, it's typically not going to make a spiral. But uh, when you have your arms in that A pose and your arms are on a like that diagonal angle, that is a good spot for it to make a spiral because it's trying to line itself up with the world and it doesn't always uh, work very well. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna hide the high resolution and we're gonna check out how poorly it projected inside the mouth because I'm pretty sure, okay, I need to, did you see it? So I just did the same thing and it selected a little tiny poly loop all the way around the head. And this is not too bad, actually. It did a pretty decent job. So that's that did it well enough that I can just smooth it on out. Let's turn on symmetry. That's the one thing if you're going to be using remesh by Z remesher, it always turns off symmetry. So you need to be aware that it's turning it off and on. So now I can just smooth this out. I can smooth out all of those, um, all those little triangles that, um, that I got from Sculptress Pro, just like I did with the body, super easy. And then we can just invert this and smooth out the lower. Can you guys see those little triangles? It might be hard to see on your screen, but see all these little triangles that those are actually being projected from the original. So if I turn on this mesh, there's no triangles, it's all squares. So I know the geometry is the geometry is uh, nice underneath. And now I can just go and smooth everything out and get rid of all those uh, facets and triangles and things. It's just a really nice way of keeping things clean. So that's, that's a perfect example of how to use Sculptress Pro Mode to put in some detail, but then come back and smooth it out. You know. Oh, Pro, yeah, Pro, I just, so Pro is saying you can avoid spirals for the most part by slicing one of the, on, on a joint. So um, I think Steve James shows this in one of the tutorials he did for ZBrush Classrooms where you can actually make, like, say, the fingertip have a poly group and it's sliced at that knuckle, and then another poly group sliced at that knuckle, and then another one sliced at that knuckle, and it will keep the groups and help not get spirals. And it's told you can totally you can try it, and it works it works well. Um, but sometimes for me in particular, I get little rogue polygons in space when I do keep groups, and I don't know if it's because I work at um, a different resolution. I don't know why why it does what it does. <laughs> why do the kids do what they do these days? No, I don't know why. But uh, yeah, I tend to get, if I do keep groups, I get problems with my mesh. It just depends. It depends. Sometimes I'll, I'll use it and sometimes not. But it's a super good tip. Night Shadow, do I have a closet full of hats? You know it. <laughs> I do, man. I love these hats. And my my family gives gives me new ones like on my birthday and stuff, so. Yep. You keep forgetting to turn you keep forgetting it turns off uh symmetry. Yeah. It's hard to remember. Alright. I'm gonna I'm gonna just put some color on these teeth. Just, uh, just some faked ambient occlusion. Hmm. 
you, <laughs> you, oh, the black zebra chat. Yes, me too, man. Did you get one? You should request one. I should request them to make one of these old man golfer hats that has like the ZBrush logo on it. Yes, I'm gonna do it. If Kyle, if you're here, he's probably not watching me. <laughs> yeah, I know what you went. I knew what you meant. It's good. I have I have like three or four like baseball hats here. Actually, have one right here. One sec. Ta-da. This is one of my favorites. It's a cool one. <laughs> it's green and orange. Good stuff. <laughs> I, I Sometimes I'll wear baseball hats, mainly when I'm working out in the yard or something like that. Okay. Oh, you'd buy one of these with the ZBrush logo on it? I'll, I'll request it. <laughs> I doubt. We'll see. There's a lot of, I don't know why a lot of artists wear hats like this. Thanks, Moon Mix. Yes, if you'd like these brushes and this user interface that I'm using, uh, feel free to visit my website at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. I'm right in the middle of overhauling my website and uh, I teach an online course called 3D Character Workshop. I'm right in the middle of updating that and bringing in the latest and greatest um, tools from ZBrush and other programs into it. Um, I also just barely did a brand new uh, interview with, with my friend Tyler Boliard that works over at Disney Feature. He's a look dev artist, so he makes textures for the Disney uh, feature. Uh, so he worked on Wreck-It Ralph 2. Fantastic interview with him. He went into kind of how he does things. And um, I do pro interviews like that for my students inside the course. Um, I have one with Mike Thompson. I have one with uh, Ian Jacobs that I, uh, a guy I used to work with at Disney Interactive. And uh, they're a lot of fun. And I have plans for a heck of a lot more in the future. I love doing those. So, okay, let's see. Hey, Dr. Pixels, how you doing? Glad to finally catch a live one. Yes, thank you. Um, feels been ages last time I <laughs> had the chance to open ZBrush. Get to it. There's no excuses. Hey, uh, over, on Nick, over on YouTube, Nicholas says, uh, Hello, Shane, you use ZBrush to poly paint over game res mesh or make a new texture in 3D Coat or Substance Painter. So um, to answer that, Nicholas, I usually work in a high resolution mesh, just like I'm doing right now. And then I will retopologize it in a program that's not ZBrush, um, something else like Maya. Um, then I will create UVs on that mesh. And then I will use something like a Marmoset tool bag to bake the maps. And I will typically do the poly paint like this and I will, I will bake the color from my high resolution mesh to my low resolution mesh. Then I will do some editing in Photoshop after the fact, but for the most part, I do all of my coloring inside of ZBrush. I do some stuff inside of Painter, but that's usually, it's not really hand painting or, or doing any color work in there. It's mostly like doing map tricks. So like ambient occlusion stuff, normal maps, and all that kind of, of thing, and doing some wear and tear and just little little details. Um, but most for the most part, I do all of my coloring in here. Oh, Night Shadow, I have. Yeah, glad to meet you live too, Vicky. Um, I do have some plans for some more some more swag, <laughs> whatever you call it. I have had a baseball hat made with my logo on it, but uh... hey, Kilman, you use ZBrush for the first time? Oh, nice. <laughs> Let's see. So Nicholas, let me know if that answered your question. All right, let's keep going here. Let's get this eyeball. Let's get this eyeball done. Um. In this one, Kevin has made his eyeball very, very small. Let's zoom in on it. Check it out. I, I like it a lot. 
Um, this one is a little more stylized and cartoony. I may go back in in Sculptress Pro mode and, and work this out. So, yeah, I think I will. You guys don't mind or do you do you want me to get to posing him and I'll do it later or are you guys interested in seeing some more detail work on the face and stuff and I really kind of want to get this this pulled and stretched face things going on you guys like that bear character <laughs> thanks thanks Joseph this is uh this design is from Kevin Keel the the dinosaur is from Kevin Keel and the cowboy is from Johannes Helgeson so, oh, hey, Brandon, how you doing? Okay. Let's see. And I want to come in here and kind of paint his belly this, this white color. So I'm going to grab kind of this beige-ish white. Just lighten this up. Whoa, looks like I have two heads showing. And I'm, I'm painting on the original. So I'm going to make this this uh, new subdivided head, the new one. Okay, and then I'm going to delete this old one. But you can see how it has this start arrow on here. See the start arrow? Here, I'm going to do the... I'm going to do the Dylan Ekron arrow. He likes to do this. <laughs> I learned it from him. Oh, I can't pull... I can't point across the canvas, but there's a start arrow on the top one and there's not on the next one down. And the reason this is here is it's a way to group subtools in the list. So I'm going to make this the new start and I'm going to delete this one. So I'll select this and delete it. Okay. So what that does is it allows you to hide the entire group all at once if you want to. But you can't have the start arrow one active if you want to do that. And here's an example. The start menu is active right now. If I hit the eyeball and turn it off and turn it back on, nothing happens. It doesn't hide. It doesn't do anything. But if I select the next sub tool below it, then oh, I have solo mode on. Let me turn solo mode off. Then if I click on this eyeball, it hides the entire group. So these claws must be in a different start group. Let's see. I'm not sure where they live. The hand claws. Anyway, that's, oh, that's why, because I had the hand claws group active. So it never hides what you have active. So that's why when I hid this whole group like this, the claws still showed. Yeah. Kind of reminds you of the T-Rex grumpy and Wilf. Yeah, Land of the Lost. <laughs> oh, funny. <laughs> I need to wa watch that. So alt click on Mal Malicus, what are you talking about? Alt click on what? Sorry, alt click on the start arrow. Yeah, I think, I don't know if they're working on group folders or not, I have no idea. So right now the best, the best thing you get is uh, this transpose all selected sub tools if you wanna move a bunch of sub tools at the same time or you get this um, hide and show start start arrow. And that's that's pretty much enough for me. That's what I want to do with it. Oh, the visible sub tool in the dock window. So you can alt click on that eyeball. What are you saying? It's not working. Alt click on the sub tools quick selects them. Oh. Huh. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. I know what you're saying now. <laughs> okay, you're talking about not in the list. You're talking about in the physical space. Yes, for sure. I use that all the time. I'm just talking about hiding and showing. So what Malchus is talking about is over here in the viewer to make subtools active, you can just hold down Alt and here, let me show you the poly groups. You can hold down Alt and click and it will make whichever subtool you click active. That's what you're talking about, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, I didn't understand what you were trying to say. <laughs> I thought you were gonna tell me something new with that start arrow. I'm like, what, what, push Alt on the arrow? 
Oh, that's on Meet the Robinsons. That that T Rex on Meet the Robinsons. I actually did the T Rex for um, three the three D tutors. Is that what it's called? Three D tutors. T Rex. Let me see if I can pull up an image for you guys. Uh, da, 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 da. What's it called? It's a pl it's plural site now. Okay, there he is. So, a long time ago when I did tutorials for, for Pluralsight, which was um, 3D Tutors before, I, I made this T-Rex, and yeah, Digital Tutors, thank you. Gosh, what did I say, 3D2? Anyway, <laughs> yeah, Pluralsight, I, I made this T-Rex. This is my character that I did for them. And this is also based on a Kevin Keel design. And I did these scales, I, did, I made them by hand, I actually, uh, painted a mask and extruded them out and smoothed it down. And I might do that with this one, but I won't make you guys watch me do it because uh, I just like the control. And here's the, the low resolution of him. So they used him a lot. They keep, they keep using him over and over and over again. I see him everywhere. But anyway, that's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, digital tutors. Hey, Rockley, how you doing? Okay, let me, uh, let me go park this back over there how I had it okay yeah that's that's actually what got me into teaching I did um, like four different tutorials over at digital tutors before I got into doing my own and uh, some of you guys might have remembered back then I did a like a golfer and he was wearing a hat kind of like this <laughs> that's funny it's been a while all right I want to fill his eye with maybe a little brighter. I'm going to make it smaller later. Um, should I do it now? Okay, you guys, poll time. I don't have a poll set up, but do you guys want me to get into posing yet? Or do you want to see um, some more detail worked into the face? What do you want? <laughs> and Yep. And I did a frog tutorial on Gumroad. Yeah, for sure. That's that's the second thing I did. So I did four tutorials for digital tutors, and then I did a little frog tutorial. It's still up on, on Gumroad. It's like 20 bucks. That's been up there for a long time now. <laughs> More detail work? What do you guys say? Some detail? All right. Moon Mix says pose it. <laughs> you guys aren't helping me out. Too posing, too detail. Oh, you, you watched the scientist one? Oh man, that was kind of a rushed one, but thanks. I'm not the, not the proudest of that one. <laughs> it's fun. Face detail. Just nostrils. <laughs> Only pose, just pose the nostrils. Color in the bottom of his jowl here. <laughs> you guys, I'm gonna do both eventually. It's it's probably a little too early to be posing him, especially if I'm gonna do hand painted scale or hand built scales on him. But I I kind of want to pose him for you guys just so you can see. Okay, it won't take me too long. What time we got? 105? We have an hour? I'm not, because I'm not, probably not going to get imposed in another hour. So maybe we'll save it for next time. Maybe one more time. Um, I will pose eventually. Um, okay, so now that I have this, I'm going to duplicate and then hide the original. Okay, let's get into some details here. <laughs> do pose and detail at the same time. Yeah, I really like the the dark purple in there and uh, just pushing it. And let's let's zoom this in so we can see that eye better. And I I do want to put the detail. See this these spikes coming off his head. That was a really cool. 
and we can get that done with uh, Sculptress Pro mode. So let's do it. Sculptress Pro. It looks like the one from the Madagascar Penguins movie. I'm tr like the, I can't remember the dinosaur from the Penguins movie. Why can't I? Anyway. <laughs> okay, so I, I could open the mouth right now a little bit if I wanted to get in there and do some of those details or I could, I could hide it or whatever. Oh, Robert, you have to take off? All right, man. Yep, yard work, get to it. Thanks for stopping by. Have an awesome day. Okay, I need to get rid of the subdivision levels. Um, and if I do, he's gonna be too high to do Sculptress Pro mode on. So I'm gonna roll down to like a three, then delete lower and higher. That's a better state. So if, you're, if you guys ever find yourself being very, very slow in, as far as like your performance, your machine performance, if you find it being slow, reduce your polygon count in your your base mesh. And there is a way to do it with a tessimate. You can do it here and it will triangulate your entire model and kind of prepare it for Sculptress Pro mode. So. <laughs> oh, the scientist guy. Oh, okay. I'm like, there was a dinosaur in that penguin's I can't remember. You're talking about the scientist reminded you of the, po okay. Gotcha, gotcha. I'm with you. Okay, um, let me see. I'm going to unhide these teeth so I can kind of work around those teeth and build out some details. Okay, so let's see. Sculptress Pro Mode Activate. There we go. I like using the um, the clay buildup sometimes with Sculptus Pro is pretty fun because it's it's the closest thing to actual clay that you're gonna get. And you can kind of see, it's very hard to see the details inside that eye, but there's, there's a lower eyelid. I need to shrink the eye size down. Let me, let me do that really quick. Let's see where that is. That's in the middle of our head. That's not where we want it. I'm gonna put it out here and make sure local symmetry is turned on and then shrink that bad boy. And then kind of park it. Push it into the head a little more. Something like this. Be a little smaller. All right. We got a lot of people watching today. Thank you so much for spending your time with me on this Monday. I appreciate it. Okay. Now I'll come back in here with the, the Sculptress Pro mode and fix it. This is just using Inflate. And I'm going to... Um, I can use this fill brush to actually cut into the surface without making kind of the messy stuff. So I'm using Alt on the fill brush and I'm just kind of cutting into it. And it's also adding triangles and the size of the triangles are based on the size of your brush. So uh, Gabfire, what is your main source of artwork? I don't understand your question, what do you, uh, what do you what do you mean by that? Like my reference or what I like to do when I do my art, I, I don't understand. I'm just trying to get an eyelid built up around this eyeball. Oh, the base concept. Yes, the base concept was, so the dinosaur was done by my friend Kevin Keel and the cowboy was done by Johannes Helgeson. I did not create it, no.
and uh, so I can I can load up the other uh, the other concepts so you can see it. Um, let's see. Okay, so this this is the one that Johannes Helgeson did, and this is the the cowboy. So the history of it was um, let me close this and open up the original. Okay, so this is the one that Kevin Keel did. Whoops, right here. So my friend Kevin Keel drew this just on his own. I was like, man, that is so cool. I love how fast that dinosaur looks like he's going across the, you know, the Western Plains with a cowboy on his back. And it just resonated with me for some reason. I really, really like it. And then um, I, I asked Kevin if he would paint this up so I could model it, you know, and from a three quarter angle instead of from the side. And that's when he did the painting that's right here. So he did this, he did this painting, but, um, and it's super duper cool and it's, it works really well as a painting, but the cowboy is still kind of, uh, not as detailed and it's kind of simple and, and kind of plain. I love, I love him a lot. He's really cool. He, I actually like the simplicity of him and the lighting and stuff like that, but I was, I, I kind of wanted a little more detailed version of him. And I love Johannes Helgeson's concept art. I actually modeled one of his, uh, he did a pirate girl and I modeled her during the stream uh, a while back. And she's, I don't know if you can see her, but she's right there 3D printed about this big. Um, then, uh, so that's when Johannes did this drawing or this painting of him. So this is a very detailed cowboy and that's the one I modeled. And I'm, I'm hoping to get this printed out by ZBrush Summit. I don't know if it'll happen, but, and then Johannes went ahead and made this dinosaur and maybe eventually I'll model this dinosaur as well because I really like it. I like that he's more of a brute and the one that Kevin did is more sleek and fast. Um, yeah, so it's, it's uh, maybe he has two of them, right? For different reasons, different purposes. And this, I really like this one just because it was kind of a cross between a dragon and a dinosaur. It's not really any one dinosaur that fits any species or anything. So I just like the design of it. It's fun. Anyway, there you go. That's what I'm doing. And so the cowboy, the cowboy that I've modeled is just about done. I don't know if you've seen that or if you want to see it really quick. Um, so <laughs> he's kind of here. Let me hide. Let me hide everything that's not that dinosaur. And I don't know, oh, because the claws, okay. And my ruler is clear down here, I can hide that. So this is what the cowboy looks like modeled. Um, and I was gonna, I don't know if I was, I'm gonna give him a belt that goes around or not, I don't know. Anyway, I'm, I'm kind of good, excited to pose him on the dinosaur in that pose that Kevin originally made. So, yeah, honestly, Joseph, I'm thinking about picking up a Form 2 pretty soon. So I, I'll probably print it and, and bring it to the ZBrush Summit. But thank you very much. <laughs> okay, um, so there's that. And I also, I also modeled the rifle rifles right here if I turn on live boolean you can see the rifle oh come on rifle upside down so there's the rifle it's supposed to be big enough to shoot dinosaurs <laughs> kind of fun oh uh what's the name of my site again it's it's 3d character workshop yeah it's just right above my head right here and if you look way up there it's uh, 3dcharacterworkshop.com and Moonmix has been posting links to it. Thank you very much. Okay, let's get back in business.
Yep. And if you if you sign up for my uh, my brushes and user interface, it'll put you on a news group that will let you know when my course will become available for enrolling again. Right now it's it's closed. I'm going to be doing a summer enrollment pretty soon. I'm excited for that. That'll be cool. And that's going pretty good. It's going really well, actually. I cannot complain at all. The students in there, there are a lot of them here right now watching, but the students in there are fantastic. And if you go to that website, there's a high resolution gallery and a blockout gallery. Those are two different areas you can see the, the student work and what they've done. Okay, I'm gonna build this up back here. Kind of make this shape. blend this in a little more it's not such a harsh turn cut this in um I don't, I, I'm not familiar with the Genomology Academy, sorry. I'm not, I don't know how good it is or what it is, or I would tell you. Just trying to inflate this area a bit. Shaking everything. Also, um, like I said, the bigger the brush, the more triangles that Sculptress Pro makes. So if you're looking at the actual surface, looks like I've actually touched right there. If I get a big brush, it's gonna make big triangles like this. And if I don't want to do that, you can turn off Sculptress Pro mode temporarily and just use the inflate and it won't uh, pull, pull uh, Gabriel calls it, uh, what does he call it? Decimate. There's tessimate and decimate. It's like, <laughs> it's like in excess song. <laughs> oh, I'm dating myself now in excess. Okay. Now, if you look at this shape right here, um, I don't have that shape necessarily happening on my guy. Okay, because I modeled it after Kevin's other drawing, so I wasn't looking at this one at the time, but I, I'm gonna match this one a little closer. So I kinda wanna build this up. Oh yeah, thanks Moonmix. then just kind of cut it in from here. Whoop, grab this detail brush. Okay, and I'm gonna start here and I'm just gonna rework this area. Just bring that down and smooth it back out, let's see. Build it up. That's one thing that's really, really cool with Sculptress Pro Mode is if you can just wipe stuff out and then bring it back. And it doesn't, you know, it's just like real clay. It's just like, if it's not working, just get rid of it. Bring something else in. Try it again. Don't be afraid. Nothing is set in stone. It's kind of changing this whole guy's face a little bit. Go. I'm gonna 
build this up more. Oh, sure. Moon mix, you want to like these four little spikes? All you do is grab the snake hook brush. It does not, Sculptor's Pro mode does not work with the regular move brush. You have to use a snake hook or something else. So um, now on, on this one, his head is way, it's it, it, it goes further back here than the current head. So I'm gonna build that up first. I feel like a dentist. It's like building up for a filling. <laughs> Just use the fill brush, that's what it's there for. And just fill in that area to build his head up. It's like uh, it's like controlled inflating. Yes, Incredibles 2 is great. Incredibles 1 is one of the, my favorite movies of all time. Incredibles 2 does not disappoint, in my opinion. I loved it. I love the character designs. They exaggerated them even more than they were in the first film. And if you if you look, I I actually talked to, to my students about this. But if you look at uh, the main guy that hires Helen, which is Mrs. Incredible, to do uh, to be a superhero, or whatever. Um, if you look at the planes on his face. They're so different than, say, Mr. Incredibles. So Mr. Incredibles, you can see uh, there's a cut that goes across his cheek that makes a plane change. That is super interesting if you watch that. And look at how his the bags under his eyes, they're like a little disc that, that have thickness. Then um, there's, uh, if you look at the main guy that hired uh, Mrs. Incredible to, to do her thing, if you look at the the plane change on his head, it comes down from his forehead, hits his eyebrow, goes around his eye to his cheek, and then it goes straight down the, the side of his face. And that's where his the plane change on his face is located rather than across the cheekbone. And uh, it's so cool to study and see just the amount of detail and design work that went into those characters. I want to go back to the theater and just like with my cell phone and just take pictures of <laughs> just for character study. They're so great. Okay. So with this fill brush, you can go in with the opposite, um, which what I mean by opposite is you hold down alt and you can cut into it and pull some of that material away like that. Then with the snake hook brush, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with this head. It's not, it's not as long. Like if you look from the, from the collar to where his, um, his brow starts, it's not quite as long the distance. This one, I have it pretty short and I don't know, I might make it longer later, but I'll show you how to, um, I'll show you how to pull it out. Let's see. Did my, oh. You like two better and they're they won't they went 50s style and deco yeah it's so good it's so good night shadow i saw your demonstration the guy's voice is the lawyer from what are you talking about the guy's voice is the lawyer from breaking bad Who, what are you talking about oh you're talking about incredibles 2 the 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 guy you're talking about is is the voice from saul right I'm turning RGB off. And you just use the snake hook brush to just kind of pull it out. It's kind of difficult from, you need to get a good angle. Finding a good angle is kind of difficult. See, it'll, it'll either make it straight or it could possibly make it flare. So you need to just kind of go from the side like this and then barely tip it. But then it's gonna flare once you get out here for the most part, but that, that doesn't look too bad. I can just smooth that down. 
and I want them flat. I don't want them round because they're like spikes, not not fingers, <laughs> you know. Make this one smaller. If it doesn't look good, just undo it and try again. <laughs> that one was pronged. Ah. Uh, There we go. And then one little one right here, I guess. Okay, and then you can just smooth them down. Then you could even come in here like really tight with a smaller brush and use trim dynamic or something like that to flatten this flatten the sides or polish just flatten them down and you can use alt if you hold down alt it will actually bring the outside geometry up to meet the polish brush if you can see that that's that's such a interesting way to do it and then you can come back in and smooth it down it creates all those triangles but Uh, let's see. I would love to have a project tool as well as project primitive. What? So what are you talking about, Malchus? You'd love to have project primitive? And then Drogan says, for the character workshop, what level of pre-knowledge is needed? I would really like to push my style towards the chunkier 3D print collectible style. So I start you from scratch. There is actually, I just put in there, not too long ago, um, I have a, an illustrator friend named Adam Manoa. And he really wanted to learn ZBrush, but he knew nothing about it. He's a good artist but he's he's not very technical as far as zbrush is concerned so i actually sat down with him and recorded the first like few hours of him inside of zbrush and me helping him get started so you can follow along with that and uh, a lot of people found that valuable And then there's a then from there, there's a whole new module. Well, another not a new module. It's another module that's called uh, just getting started with ZBrush, and it walks you through every single thing that uh, that to get you up and running, to get you to the point where you can start blocking stuff out. And then I have a very kind of small. Um, three-part series where I just have you go th walk through the entire course but you're just doing a bus just a head so you can get used to it in baby steps so you can just try it out on a small level before you take on a full character I need to um, I need to redo that one with the new tools inside ZBrush but it's completely relevant Okay, so anyway, Moon Mix, that's kind of how I would do these. Something like that. Um, let's see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quickly show you. I'll show you guys. I'm going to give you a little quick preview of what it looks like. Um, so this is inside the course right here. And if you click on this getting started, you can see this see this early ZBrush beginner walkthrough with Adam and Noah right here. It's a 10 part series of me just sitting over his shoulder walking him through. So um, this is just, you know, I talk about being a character artist and how to set up ZBrush with my user interface and stuff like that. You can see all the modules right here. 
um, what he was talking about was module one ZBrush fundament fundamentals. And you can t see that I cover like spotlight, geometry, polygroups, those kind of things. And if you go inside one of these, here is the video. And then I also have text and images to walk you through, you know, exactly how to set up polygroups and things like that. So you can, it's kind of like a reference as well as, you know, walking you through how to do everything. So uh, how do I get out of this? Um, go away. It's like stuck right on the edge. There we go. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, and Elementalist, Elemental Mist. That's a cool name. That's awesome. Great to hear. I love to hear that stuff. Thanks, Twixit. Twigsed. Twigsed. That's super rewarding for me to hear you guys you know, saying that you enjoyed it because I, sometimes I never know, you know, I just kind of send the videos off into the abyss and I don't hear if people like them or not, you know, some, sometimes I do. Uh, Drogon, yes and no, but I, I probably can't look at it because this is Pixelogic's channel and they want to see ZBrush stuff and talk about ZBrush stuff. So I don't have time to really uh, go check out people's portfolios and give portfolio reviews. Um, if you could understand that, but if you want to share it for other people that are viewing to see, uh, be my guest, as long as it sticks within the confines, you know, no, no gore or porn or anything like that, <laughs> please. Okay. I'm turning off, uh, turning off Sculptress Pro and I'm just painting that purple in there a bit. That's looking pretty cool. Thanks, Arakli. That means so much, man. You've been in there since the beginning, right? Okay, I'm gonna show you, I'm, I'm probably gonna do all these scales offline so you guys don't have to sit and watch me tediously create them all. But what I'm thinking about is um, creating them just like I did with that T-Rex for the plural site stuff. Uh, and how I did that was it was just painstakingly slow. <laughs> and I know there's better ways with drag alpha and all that kind of stuff, but I just like the power of um, doing it by hand where not like that grab the mass pen okay so I'll just grab a brush like this hard paint brush that has hard edges on it and then I'll just come in here just like Kevin did with these scales when he originally painted this and I'll just use mask and I'll just start masking out scales and I would probably do it on a bit higher res this isn't high enough res for for my like liking so but I just kind of come in here and do this because it's much more controlled and it looks designed. That's the thing with, I guess that that's one of the main differences between uh, stylized and realism is stylized is typically designed, right? It, it has thought and care put into where things are put. Um, not saying that realistic is not, but when you're making things that are real, you're kind of looking for that chaos, right? That that kind of dirt and mud and and everything to fill in the gaps. Then after I make something like this, it, I would I would flip it around like this, and then I would do an overall extrude or inflate, and you'll find that under uh, deformation. And there's inflate and there's inflate balloon. I typically will just go with inflate and just barely peek it. Also, and I'm not doing it right now, but I also will put this on a layer. This is the only time I use layers is when I'm doing surface detail like this, okay? And the reason why is because 
then I can go back underneath that layer and adjust the geometry without, hopefully, without damaging the scales. Um, I typically do not use layers. I will, I will stay away from them because there are, there are a lot of issues with layers that they just don't work with a lot of tools. And um, sometimes you'll forget that you have them on and you'll, like they don't work with posing and things like that. So they can be dangerous and I typically stay away from them, but they have their place, they have their purpose. So then I can, while the mask is still on, what I'll do is I'll come in and I'll just kind of lighten them up. There's two different things you can do. You can either lighten them up like Kevin's done here, so the scales are lighter, or you can darken them. So you can actually make the lines in between all the scales lighter than the scales themselves. And that's an interesting thing to do. So you can kind of see some of the color, I probably painted that too much. Let me just do a lighter, a lighter blend over the top of it. Just so I can have that color come through. So that's what I'll probably do for the scales on, on all of him. But I'm not going to cover the entire everything on, on top of the entire thing. Because... Again, you want it to be designed, so you want specific areas to have detail and other, and ha let there be areas of rest, so your eye can kind of take a break. And it just, it's like a break in music. You know, if you're a musician and you just have that stop for a minute before it starts again, that's more powerful than just having music just running the entire time. So it works the same with surface detail. You want to have detail in some areas and less in others, and that's why. In Kevin's paint, you can see some down here on this piece, some here, some here, but maybe not, you know, in these areas. So then you can just kind of layer things up and it's, that's pretty much how I did it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to back, back out of that because I'm not ready to do the scales, but I just wanted to show you guys how I do it when I get there. So you're not missing out on the instruction as far as when I do it. So hopefully I'll, I'll be able to have a chance to get that done this week and hit posing first thing next week. <laughs> but I'm gonna continue just kind of working out the non-scale details of, of all of this stuff. And it's kind of, it's kind of difficult because like I, I started with Kevin's other design for his dinosaur and this one's changed. So like he has more teeth and they're they're all pointing down on this one and the other one that has some that are pointing up like this. I might flip it to where it's down because I kind of like that design. But I'm gonna go in here and uh, kind of inflate around these teeth like this. I really like this clay buildup to add some variation in the, like this, to get to add some edges and things. It's really fun. Thanks, Eric. And I'm not in Sculptor's Pro mode now. I'm just doing basic sculpting. So Sculptor's Pro mode is actually when you're out of geometry and you need more. That's when you use it. Like, man, I really wish I had more geometry right here because these polygons are stretching. So bam, turn it on, and there you got it. Hold on one sec. I'm baking. I'm going to ask my wife to turn on the AC. <laughs> I forgot to do it before I came down here. Um, somebody is asking, oh, yeah, this, this summer? Uh, I mean, it is summer right now. I'm going to be doing a summer enrollment any, any day now. I just need to get it ready. There we go. It's getting roasty in here. There's no windows and it's super hot. <laughs> All right. Build this up some more. Like it's an actual tooth growing out of his head like that. Okay. 
And then I really like how this, this is coming out and surrounding both of those teeth and kind of building up like this. Yay, AC. And you can also do the opposite. So if I solo this, you can also use this brush to cut in and make make kind of these uh, gum holes. <laughs> gum hole. That's almost a bad word. <laughs> Such a gum hole. Tooth socket. There we go. <laughs> I like I like gum hole better. Yeah, I have a fan and I it's really big and I I put it outside my door right here, but it just blows in my microphone and that's not too comfortable for you guys. So, hey Night Shadow, I saw you commented on my EV. I hope you like it. Yeah, man, I'm trying to remember. Are you talking about like Blender EV or? Oh, thanks, Jimmy. I kind of like to have um, hints of where teeth could be, too. Like right here. Just add some chaos along that gum line, lip line. Oh, your Pokemon. Yes, yes, yes. So <laughs> that's funny. The new now now I remember. Okay. The new the new blender uh what's it the renderer is called Eevee. It's the same. So I got confused there for a second. But yeah, it turned out great, man. Nice work. Okay, I'm gonna this is gonna be pulling the the mouth back all the way back here so i like how these uh the skin is actually being pulled turn up the smoothing intensity so it goes quicker Same with this right here. It's kind of pulling that whole area back. I'll do one more kind of down here. It's it's nice to kind of uh, like like point in a direction like this um, when something is being pulled. And then you also make your strokes in that direction and go from thin where the, the peak the peak pulling is happening and then get wider as it loosens up. You do that in clothing as well. You can go broad, more broad down here. So Moonbix, when you're doing 3D printing, there there is some prepping that um, that needs to go into it, but that prepping does not include retopology. So you do not need to retopologize your character if you're just going to be 3D printing it, but you do need to like make it watertight. Uh, usually by running a Dynamesh on it, we'll get rid of all that interior geometry. You need to put keys in it, and then. You also, not necessarily all the time, just in, if it needs it, you put keys in there and then you will need to decimate it. So it's very low resolution and decimating will actually create triangles and Sculptress Pro mode is fantastic for um, getting or for editing a decimated model after the fact. Uh, before Sculptress Pro mode, you were kind of stuck. I would typically go back to my original model before I had decimated it 
edit it there and then re-decimate it after the fact and then keep going continuing forward. But sometimes decimate will get rid of some little tiny details and it's nice if you have Sculptress Pro mode to go in there and cut them back in or build them back out. Um, yeah, it's super duper nice for that stuff. Evie sounds like eBay in Japan, <laughs> in Japanese. Nice. You're like, what? What are you saying? Okay, let's see. I'm going to build this up more. Build this up more. Thanks again, guys, for joining me today. I super appreciate it. I know you have you guys have a million other things you could be doing rather than watching me. So <laughs> I really appreciate it. And I hope you guys are sculpting along with me. If you can, if you have the means. That's what I do when I'm listening to people stream sculpt on the on Twitch when they're sculpting is I like to sculpt and just kind of listen to them in the background and then pop over if they say something that I need to see. Nice. Good to hear. Animating, that works too. I should say creating. Be being creative. It's good to get your um, creative mind flowing on a Monday, the start of the week. Set you up for being creative the rest of the week. Importing a facial expressions from Maya to ZBrush and prepping the colors. Awesome. You think you don't have a life? <laughs> Silly. Yep, working is fine too. Got to make a living. I think I'm going to build this up and put another tooth right there. So one more kind of sticking down or flipping this one around. I haven't decided yet. All right, you guys, I got to get that fan going. One second. I, I guess I only have 10 minutes left. Uh, but hold on one second. I'm, I'm like sweating like crazy. One second. like a boiler room <laughs> okay now I'm going to build up some surface details kind of down the the top of the nose just a little bit like larger scale areas That's too fast of a build up. I'm going to turn this down. Take off my hat. It's not that's not what's sweating. <laughs> Side effects. <laughs> When I get the form too, you better sculpt yourself an air conditioner and 3D print it. Yeah, I just need more airflow in here. I have a I have a air conditioner. It's just the rest of the house is just fine. It's just in in my little I call it my hobbit hole with no there's no windows and one door. I've thought about building a like a bookcase door to it because it's on a perfect wall out in the main in my TV room, my entertainment room, and uh, it'd be cool to have a secret bookcase door to come in here.
my shiny head I have no hair <laughs> none I lost my hair when I was 21 I had no chance my son likes to take off my hat and slap my head <laughs> psh, psh, psh. like Benny Hill Hey, Laszlo, my early ZBrush beginner walkthrough, is it available? No, it's 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 in my course right now. Um, I'm thinking about making it live for free outside of the course. I, I haven't decided yet. <laughs> yep, it's it's high resolution. The top of my head's high resolution. Yeah, actually, I am thinking about making a beginner, like just a f super light, simple beginner ZBrush course for free. Uh, I just haven't yet because there's so many resources out there already to learn ZBrush. I didn't know if it would be redundant or if people like the way I teach. So uh, maybe it would be worth it. I don't know. It would be a good uh, a good way to show how how I teach without you guys having to you know purchase anything other than you know how I teach on the stream. Oh, thanks, Jimmy. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I need to get some in that nose too. Let's put some in that nose. Let me. I'm gonna cut it in first. Some more. Before I do that, <laughs> some orange juice. Why am I building it up? I need to cut it in. I'll turn on Sculptors Pro mode. I'm running out of geometry in here. There we go. <laughs> yeah, he does look hungry, doesn't he? There we go. That's kind of fun. I'm going to bring some more of this, this beige color up into his uh, lower jaw. Maybe lighter. I did shave it for the Navy. How'd you know? They shaved it off and it never grew back. <laughs> there you go. Those bastards. <laughs> That's cool. It'll look really cool when I get the lighter scales in there too. And some of these uh, these stripes back here, like on this on this little bit. this way down and get these kind of these stripes in here not that far down yay what are those brushes you have along the bottom these are my custom brushes cold fire or cold white fire um these are, yeah, these are brushes that I made and a lot of them are based on brushes that exist. I just wanted to remake the icons so I can see exactly what they do and then tweak them a little bit to my liking. Actually, uh, Malicus is in here watching right now. Malicus, he created this pinch brush. It's called uh, Ma Cut. 
This is just one that I made a different icon for and I changed the parameters just slightly. And uh, I don't, then I just, I, I just like these icons. I offer them up for free on my website if you wanna go check them out. They're just, uh, they're over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com if you want my brushes and you can um, just sign up for my newsletter and you'll get them. Hey Malicus, where are your brushes? Should post a post a link up really fast if you're still here. Malchus has some fantastic brushes. Um, am I trying to make what's on the left side of the screen? Absolutely, Skylar. That's what I'm trying to do anyway. Let's see. Not fill. I want this. And I'm going to grab this color and I'm actually going to go a little lighter with it and a little more yellow with it. And I'm going to build up these scales. Oh, let me turn on RGB. Build up these scales that are on his eye, eye crest thing. Turn on Sculptors Pro, see what it does. So sometimes Sculptors Pro will give you a tighter, kind of a tighter, uh, cut in there. I went too light with those. <laughs> the Al oh, are you? T I think you're talking about the eels from Little Mermaid, right? Yes, you're right. Is it Flotsam and Jetsam? There we go. Still too light. I'm just trying stuff out here. Um, turning the intensity down and the, the, the colors are still, I just need to make them just barely lighter. There we go. I'm not going to make as many as Kevin has in the concept, just simplifying them. Trying to make them get a little, little bigger as they go back. Hey, mob brushes. Awesome. Thanks. What's my favorite character like of all time or one that I've done or what's what do you mean Uh, did I print all of those characters behind you? They are actually part of Disney Infinity, if you know what that is. I worked on Disney Infinity. Um, I worked at Disney Interactive for 10 years, and I did about one-fifth of those characters back there. So, and there are some, yeah, there are some that are actually 3D printed of my personal work. You can go to my art station. It's just artstation.com, um, and it's, uh, slash Shane Olson art, I believe. I think Moon Mix has a link. <laughs> Moon Mix, I'm coming becoming too reliable on you dropping those dropping those links. And if you're over on YouTube, I don't believe that you can see the links. You can see them in chat, but you can't click on them. I apologize. Thanks. Thanks, YouTube. Well thanks Malchus. We just dropped your brush. We just dropped a link to your brushes in here. We were talking about brushes if you missed it. So I'm giving you the, the what is it called? Pimping your brushes. <laughs> Shameless plug. That's the word I was looking for.
Malchus, I think besides the Damien Standard brush, yours was the first custom brush I ever used. I love it. Still love it. Thanks, Moon Mix. Just, I'm just cutting in some little details here and there. I probably shouldn't be at this point yet. But I want to because it's fun. <laughs> Can one make a decent income off of 3D printing characters? Uh, not 3D printing, but mass manufacturing you can. 3D printing one-offs, like if you own a Form 2 printer and you're just printing off, it just... The, the process is too long and the materials are too expensive. This is this is kind of looking like uh, not scales. <laughs> I'm gonna back that off a little bit. I want, to, I want it to look like it's looking more like a like a roll and tuck leather <laughs> or something. Next to the Damien standard, yours is the only brush I've installed that aren't shipped with Z. Oh yeah. Nice. Thanks, man. It's, I completely appreciate it. That's awesome. I'm going to cut some details. Actually, I'm going to lift some edges out of these here. These are probably too even. I should probably, uh, I know Kevin's are pretty even too, but like too evenly spaced. You want them more chaotic, like zebra stripes. They, they, they shouldn't be this even. So I'm gonna have to go in there and add some chaos. Let me try and make this more like a scale. round them off maybe more so maybe come down here and round it like that so it doesn't look like a pattern in in leather or something smooth them out mm -hmm. maybe down here yeah, I'm going to have to work out those scales. <laughs> Just trying stuff. All right, guys. Um, I think I'm going to wrap it up for today. It's uh, 2.05. And I got to I gotta get on with my week. But thank you so much for joining me, everybody, on your Monday. Like I said, I know you have places to be. Uh, you could You could be doing a billion other things than watching me. <laughs> but I truly appreciate it. Thank you very much. I like that he can see from the front when you're looking down his his head. Let's unhide all. And we're going to delete the old head. There we go. And here is the cowboy... I need to brighten up his colors. They're looking quite dull next to this orange uh, dragon. So I might um, I might take some of the colors from Kevin's cowboy and they'll they'll work into here a little bit easier, a little better. He's looking dull. So especially his coat, that yellowish weirdness coat. I like this orange coat a little better. Um, so we'll see, we'll see where it goes. But thanks everybody for joining me. Hopefully by the next time, by next 
Um, by next week, I will be ready to pose. I'm going to try and get the scales on him this week. And like I said, I'm going to do it exactly like I showed you when I was uh, doing the demonstration for those shales. But um, yeah, I might scale up that dyno just a bit. It's going to depend and it will completely change when I get the cowboy actually riding on him and posed that I, it could change everything, you know, and it usually does. Usually you discover who the character is when you go to pose it. And when I say who he is, like, you know, what, what kind of uh, proportions and everything. So um, I, I wonder if, I wonder if uh, Facebook stopped working on the text chats because I see some stuff over on Facebook and I didn't see it come up, but um, Cold White Fire, I do not have a Discord yet. I'm actually thinking about getting one. I'm thinking about, would you guys like a, uh, would you guys like a Facebook group that's attached to the 3D Character Workshop that's not necessarily in the 3D Character Workshop, just somewhere you can post stuff and just kind of talk to each other and have some fun. Kind of like 10,000 hours, but uh, based more just on stylized characters. Um, Maybe you know maybe I'll do something like that. Um, a Discord would be cool. Uh, we I kind of have a a non um, non official Discord that one of my students has made, but it's kind of students only right now. But maybe I will. Um, yeah, maybe I'll make some of those for you guys. If you're looking for a place to put stuff, that'd be that'd be kind of fun. So, anyway, guys, um, thanks so much for for hanging out with me today and uh, I will talk to you next week. Have a great week. Get a lot of sculpting in, get some creativity going. Thanks Pixelogic for letting me stream again today. It's been awesome. And uh, oh, there's a Facebook post right on. Okay, uh, <laughs> that would be dope. Okay, I'll think about it. I'll, I'll think about it. Um, what was I saying? And if you, if you wanna try out ZBrush, go to pixelogic.com or there's a trial. I think there's a link down below to grab the trial of, of ZBrush. If you haven't played with it yet, you can also grab Sculptress for free and dilly dally around with Sculptress. Um, and uh, if you want these brushes and you want my user interface for ZBrush, they are free. You can go grab them at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. You can see it along the top right up there and uh, just cruise over there and sign up for my newsletter. And the reason I have a newsletter is because I have an online workshop and I just send out emails and notifications and things like that when my workshop becomes available for enrollment again. And I'm gonna be doing a new one soon for summer, summer enrollment, so be looking out for that. And uh, thanks again, see you guys next week. So long.